What I want you to know if you're considering freezing your eggs. Hey friends, I am Dr. Natalie Crawford. I'm a board certified OBGYN and REI. And today I wanna to talk about egg freezing. So I love egg freezing. When I was a medical student, egg freezing was experimental. I would sit in coffee shops and talk with my girlfriends about what job I should choose in order to have a family. The idea that I could pause my fertility or keep options open for the future was not even on the table. And so I'm so excited that this is an option we can bring to reproductive women at different ages so that they have more choices as they go. First of all, please subscribe to the channel. It means so much to me. I spend my time making fertility related education and content for you. And I would love it if you would subscribe and follow along. Egg freezing. It's one of my pet peeves when people call egg freezing a insurance policy. Let's just do a little financial Q&A. An insurance policy is something that you pay into that is guaranteed to pay off if you need it. And that's not what egg freezing is. Egg freezing is a investment. So it's like playing the stock market. You are going to use your best knowledge. You're going to understand the odds and you're going to place a bet on yourself in the best way that you can. But there are factors and variables that we don't know yet about the future. And so that is where the investment and stock market piece of egg freezing comes in. I think it is great. And I'm going to go over some of the top questions I get asked about egg freezing and help you along the way. Number one is when should I consider freezing my eggs? This is a great question. The short answer is that the sooner you freeze your eggs, the better. The earlier you are, the younger you are, the more eggs that you have, the higher the outcome of success is going to be. And since success is having a live born child when you want, I want you to have that success also. So if you are watching this and considering freezing your eggs, the time might be now. What do studies say? Studies support that if you are in your early 30s, around 32 to 33, and not ready to conceive, and you want one or two children, that you should consider freezing your eggs at that time period. If you want four children, you may need to go through more cycles or freeze at a younger age. It's all about your goals and what do you want. And so number two is how many eggs do I need to freeze? This is largely dependent on you, your goals, how old you are. The younger you are, your eggs are better quality and they're going to survive better. The older you are, you're going to lose more in the attrition process because more are going to be genetically abnormal. So if you're coming to me younger, you're going to get a higher return on that investment than if you're older. That doesn't mean that we don't do egg freezing in women who are older. We certainly do egg freezing in women who are older. Sometimes it just makes the most sense. To me, it's most important that you understand the process and what it takes and what you're looking to get. The reality is that we do a math equation to try to help us understand the process. If you think about egg freezing, here's the very short answer. Imagine inside your ovary, there's a vault. You've heard me say this before. Each month, a group of eggs comes out of the vault. And from those eggs in a normal month, one of those eggs would ovulate, the rest of them die. And the next month, a new group comes out. When you take birth control pills, the brain is just not sending out any of the hormones to stimulate the egg growth called FSH. All of the eggs come out of the vault. They just all die. Same thing happens next month. So birth control pills don't change your fertility. If you have an IUD in place, same thing is happening. You just don't grow a lining because of the progesterone if you have a hormonal based IUD. So you may not have a period even though you're still ovulating and still losing eggs. Fun fact is that we can actually do egg freezing while your IUD is in place. You don't have to take it out. You can just carry on your way. So that is one myth that I see all the time is that women think they have to get their IUD taken out or replaced. And we don't have to do that at all. We totally ignore what's happening in your uterus and we just proceed and get your ovaries along. The whole premise is that all the eggs that come out of the vault, we want them all to grow. And that's what we're trying to accomplish with the IVF protocol. This number is highly dependent on you, meaning when you're born with all the eggs you're ever going to have, they come out of the vault and when the vault's empty, you're in menopause. When the vault is more full, more eggs come out every month. And when the vault is less full, less eggs come out every month. This is called ovarian reserve or how many eggs are in the vault. So if you have a higher ovarian reserve, we will get more eggs. And if we have a lower ovarian reserve, we will get fewer eggs. We can only work with what your body has given us. That's variable one. Variable two is based on your age, a different percentage of those eggs will be genetically normal when we go and make them into embryos. 
That's super important to understand as well. The woman who is 30 is going to have 70% of her eggs be genetically normal. The woman who's 35 is going to have around 50% and the woman who is 40 is going to have about 25%. Understanding what the reality is of the average woman is going to help you make the best decisions for your future. And that's all we can do. In order to think about how many eggs you get, let's just understand the process. Every egg that you get is not likely to survive the freeze thaw. Typically, labs are going to have about an 80 to 90% survival. So you should know that some of these eggs, because it's a single cell filled with water, and when it goes to be thawed, sometimes it just won't survive. So it won't even be able to be fertilized. So you need to understand what is the rate of egg survival in this lab, the lab that I'm freezing eggs inside. That's a question, write it down, ask your doctor. And so you should know in the lab we use, it's 10%. So I would say, okay, if I freeze 20 eggs, I'm going to anticipate that two of them won't survive the freeze thaw. So now I have 18 that have survived. Then we're gonna talk about fertilization. Fertilization rates, frozen eggs have to be fertilized with a form of fertilization called ICSI or intracytoplasmic sperm injection. This is where you take a sperm, put it into an egg. You don't have 100% fertilization with that though. Typical fertilization rates are going to be around 75 to 80%. So there's one loss. Then these embryos have to grow out to the blastocyst stage. That is going to be that stage where an embryo could be implanted or genetic testing can be done. About 50% will make it to that stage. Then you have to see which embryos are now genetically normal. That's variable based on age. And then even every genetically normal embryo doesn't become a baby. Live birth rates are around 65 to 70%. So I like in my brain to have about two normal embryos per child you wanna have. And I work backwards with that math based on your current age. And we decide what's our goal number of eggs and how many cycles is that going to take you? And what that means is how many rounds. If you have a low ovarian reserve or you're older or you need a higher egg count than you have coming out of the vault each month, that means we may take the eggs from May and then the eggs from June and the eggs from July to get to that egg number. That's called three rounds or three cycles of egg freezing. What does the process tend to look like? The process is not nearly as long as you think it is. This is another one of those big myths that I find patients are really concerned about. They think it's going to take forever and ever. The active phase of egg freezing is about two weeks. So the IVF protocol, in order to get those eggs to come out of the vault, it's a combination of suppression and stimulation. For most young normal women, suppression is birth control pills if you can tolerate them. So step number one would be birth control pills for two or three weeks. Then you're going to have a baseline ultrasound to confirm that that suppression worked. And then you're going to enter into the stimulation phase. This is the active part of the egg freezing process. This is when you're using your hormone shots every day. So these are small shots. They are mostly FSH, the medication from your brain that would get a follicle to grow. And you're going to inject yourself every day and then come into the office every two to three days for monitoring. Monitoring is getting an ultrasound and get blood work. We're going to watch, start an ovulation blocker when we need to, talk about more or less medication. And we're trying to wait till we can get the most number of mature eggs possible. We base that on size and your estrogen level. Once you get to that stage, you're then going to have a trigger shot and that will allow us to go in approximately 35 and a half, 36 hours later for the egg retrieval. The egg retrieval is the most invasive part of the process. This is done under an anesthesia and an IVF lab. The anesthesia is an IV based anesthesia. So you're asleep, but you don't have a breathing tube in place. It is low risk, but not no risk. And what we do is we take a needle and we're putting that needle attached to the vaginal ultrasound into your vagina, puncturing the wall of the vagina, entering into the ovary and draining out the fluid from inside the ovary and getting test tubes full of your eggs. Once we get those test tubes full of eggs, then we are taking those into the lab. They are stripping off the outer cells called the cumulus, seeing if the egg is mature, and then freezing the mature eggs. And that is the process. It's about two active weeks for you. If you want to do another round or another cycle, we can usually batch that right after it and start another one relatively quickly. Important things to just understand about the process. Your clinic. Who does the monitoring? Is it doctors, nurses, sonographers? What time is the monitoring at? How long are those appointments normally going to be? How do they communicate results to you? Is that a phone call, a portal, an email? What is the normal process just so you can make sure you understand it? Who's going to do the retrieval? Is it your doctor or is it doctor of the day? 
we do a doctor of the day model. So that means half the time it'll be me, half the time it'll be my fabulous partner, but we like two brains taking care of you your whole IVF cycle. So you'll see us each half of the time and that's how we manage IVF. But every clinic does it a little bit different and you're gonna wanna know the answers to those questions. When you go in to see and talk about egg freezing, you're gonna find out that we want more information on you. The best things you can think about is your goals. How many kids would you like to have? At what age would you like to start having kids? Do you have a partner right now or do you have no partner? How do you feel about alternative paths to parenthood like egg donation? And if you have a current partner, how do they feel about those alternative paths? And then which of your goals are flexible and which of them are not? There's no right or wrong answer here, but really to best understand your ovarian reserve and your fertility potential and if you should freeze your eggs, you wanna understand your goals as well. When people ask me, when should I consider freezing my eggs? I always answer the same way. The moment you're asking the question, you're the youngest you're ever going to be. You have the most eggs that you're ever going to have that are going to be the most genetically normal. You'll get the best return on your investment right now. Hope this video helped. Would love if you would subscribe to the channel. And as always, you can get more on the As A Woman podcast or follow me on Instagram at Natalie Crawford, MD. Thanks, friends.